Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about bonusing your employees. How to do it, what are some good ideas, should you do it, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's going on? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully it is halfway decent. Um, Listen and binge on all the episodes you want. We've been doing this for four plus years, 230 plus episodes, all 30 minutes long. They're anywhere podcasts are found. And of course, YouTube, uh, unfortunately, you have to see me, but you get to see the cool sticker wall behind me if you are watching on YouTube. By the way, give it a thumbs up if you're on YouTube and comment. That would be rad. Um, But either way, if you are not new to the show, welcome back. Thanks for hanging out again. Um, You're awesome, by the way. Every one of you who listens to all the episodes keeps those views up high and, uh, more importantly, buys your supplies through me. Huh? It's because of you that I finally get to go on a vacation this year. Uh, I'm leaving on vacation tomorrow, in fact, when I'm recording this. So, super, super awesome. So, thank you guys so much. If you want me to be your rep, and I would want nothing more than to be your rep, my number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. You can call me, text me, save that number. When you're ready to put an order in, just shoot me a text and be like, Yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I push go instead of you. It's a virtual high five of awesomeness. It costs you nothing extra. And I get a little cheddar from the sale. That's why, uh, that's how I make my money. So thank you very much in advance, by the way. Uh, Again, 862-312-2026. Shameless plug there. Second shameless plug. If you haven't yet, get yourself the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Um, This magazine comes out every single month, and it has sticker sheets with custom window cleaning stickers. You can cover your buckets and everything else. It's awesome. It supports the industry. Uh, They're actually really, really uh, an an awesome magazine. I'm not just saying this because I'm the owner of the magazine. It's because I really like the magazine. Um, Nothing better than having it like a real, you know, in-your-hands type magazine. But go to awcmag.com. Get the subscription. Uh, if you want to go to uh, awc.com and then do um, the swag area, we actually have back issues. If you want to buy all, I think, 10 back issues, it's like 20 bucks. if you want to get the whole set. Uh, get them. We want to send them out. Um, we're a clearing house for the end of the year, so go check that out. <sighs> anyway, okay. All the spam and plugs all done. Thank you guys for everybody who supports me, by the way. Um, but today we're talking about bonusing your employees and it comes to the time that I'm recording. This is actually before I would normally be bonusing my employees. Now I sold my company a few years ago, so I don't do this necessarily anymore. Uh, I do bonus my, um, assistants that I have now, but not, uh, not window cleaners in general as I'm, I'm hitting the, uh, the uh the lens here i'm sorry um so uh by the way this is a uh, great great tv anyway so if you have employees think about bonusing them in general bonusing is something that people say well if i bonus them every year or twice a year they're gonna get used to it and that's okay right Because what happens is sometimes throughout the year, they have really crappy times, crappy weeks, crappy seasons, crappy everything. It really makes them feel a little bit better knowing that they have kind of this big bonusy thing coming their way, right? So when you bonus somebody, there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, Again, uh, talk to your HR department, uh, HR company your taxes, all that fun stuff. Talk to all that, see your deductions, but it is um, the same as, um, you know, deduction-wise for you. But it helps your employees. It helps your employees. Um, There's under a certain dollar amount. People always say, well, I pay them cash. That's tricky because you don't want to do anything cash. If it's not recorded, then they're not paying taxes on it, which will get them in trouble, and you paid them in cash, which you weren't paying taxes on, uh to give it to them. So it's tough. Don't do cash really 
it's it's a it's a it's a gray area don't do cash um but with that being said there are a few kind of rules that i always adhere to um and the first one for me is i always did two bonuses a year and uh it doesn't mean that i necessarily pay them less per hour but what it does do is it's almost like a um uh, a type of um perk that kind of comes with the job now let me explain when and why i pick what i do so you know that spring is going to be the busiest time second busiest is going to be fall so after the dust settles is fourth of july spring rush is done you're into fourth of july usually it's a holiday maybe you do a little bit of a, a couple days off around there right back in the day i used to do a complete shutdown for the week of the fourth of july that was always my only trip i took the in the year was the fourth of july so for me we shut down all the employees had that time off and i gave them a bonus but the timing even without shutdown really works pretty well and by the way if you are um too busy to shut down or too busy to give them a couple days off or too busy to not work holidays or too busy to not work saturdays or sundays you're doing something wrong busy's good but we didn't do we didn't take on this these roles that we do uh business owners to work harder than we ever did before and then ignore our families and uh, ignore the freedom that comes with it that's my opinion i'm just some idiot with a mic right but with that being said reevaluate if you're not able to do this man we're just too busy we can't it's a scheduling thing if you don't want to work the three days around um fourth of july or four days around fourth of july don't schedule work those days when somebody says to you, just like any other time of year, oh, I need it done before the 4th, can we do that? And you have no slots available? Say, no, actually, I'm sorry, we don't. Just like if those jobs, those slots were filled with other jobs. Yes, you're not making money, but sometimes, you know, you need to kind of recoup. You need to show your employees that you appreciate them, and you also have to kind of, you know, reward craziness. You guys know that in spring, it gets nuts, and there's times where they're working a ton of hours and they're covering and they're just there's no end in sight it does come so helping them do it twice a year really kind of allows them to realize that they're appreciated both times but it's when you're cash heavy so you have the most amount of money you make in spring so in the fourth of july that's when all your checks have kind of come in you're sitting on the most amount great time to give a uh, bonus at that time then the second bonus I always do is the end of the year, which is for the Christmas. Now, again, if you're doing shutdowns, uh, it would be from Christmas to New Year's that week. Uh, it's really not awesome to schedule people that week. Sometimes they just really don't want it. Um, in Wisconsin, where I'm originally from, if you couldn't tell from the weird accent, um, that we didn't do houses then anyway like after thanksgiving it just really kind of just shuts down so the shutdown wasn't really that bad but it was like hey guys take the week off like we'll figure stuff out we'll recoup nice and refreshed at the first of the year but what i would always do is give them a bonus now let me say a lot of you a lot of you are non-christians and christmas isn't really like oh christmas but, but here's the thing a majority of people still are. A lot of people are. So that particular holiday is usually a holiday for everyone, even if you're not really following that uh, religion, right? So it's not a religious thing. If you say, oh, I don't do it, I still work on Christmas, awesome. If you can find people that just count that as another day and they don't take the day off or they don't do anything, that's cool. But, I mean, there's a lot of people who are not um, Christians that have Christmas trees, you know, that like the, the celebration side, just getting together with family. So it's not a religious thing. It's the end of the year. And usually even stores, you drive around, most stores are not open on Christmas in the U.S. Most stores are not open. It's because it's kind of a national holiday, right? So for that timing, just works great because we're coming off of fall. People uh, usually around that time are um, having... Um, um, 
buying presents for people or just having something kind of year end. It gets the deductions in for you before the year end. And then it also allows them if they are taking any type of shutdown to kind of end that way. So again, you're cash rich and it's a great time. Those are the two times a year I do. If you do it like January and, you know, uh, August or something, yes, that would help them out because they may be a little slower, but it's a lot harder for you to coordinate that because you're coming off a of winter. A lot of us don't have a bunch of cheddar lying around after winter. If we do, we're spending it on equipment, which by the way, remember me when that comes to <laughs> that time. By the way, a funny thing is um, we're always busier just before you guys are busier, right? Or as you start to get busy, we're busy because people buy supplies as they're getting busy. But another time is this time of year before the end of the year, everybody's putting in these deduction orders, right? Which is so smart, but they're getting all this new equipment and they're getting it now so that they can get it on their uh, taxes before the end of the year. So interesting on that side of it, either way. Um, but, um, but yeah, do buy annual bonuses. It really does, uh, make a lot of sense for you. And it makes a lot of sense for, um, your employees when it all kind of comes down to that. So, uh, definitely look into doing that. Uh, another idea that some people do that I have done, um, and I feel like even sometimes, I guess it could go either way, but it's gift bonuses. So a gift bonus would be that um, instead of getting a cash bonus, which again, a cash bonus is cool, right? Money is cool, but at a certain point, money is just a number, right? When you give an item, it's an item they wouldn't have necessarily spent the money on, right? And again, if you're buying like your employees, they all get laptops one year or they all get um, uh AirBuds or Air uh, AirPods or or AirPod Pros or whatever you like, that helps them because they're listening to podcasts eh? or music or something on the job. If you let them do that, put one of your phone in. So giving them something like that, gift wise, is really pretty cool. It really uh, shows that they're appreciated, um, and it's something a little bit more unique than uh, cash. Uh, but this stuff still costs money, right? So you can do those more as random bonuses. You can do them as like job well done bonuses, things like that don't necessarily have to be your biannual bonus, uh, but it's another idea. And one thing that I always kind of felt with uh, um, gift bonuses is that every type of gift bonus is usually something that is above and beyond normal scope of work, but has some kind of tethered to work, right? So if one year you're going to give away iPads to your, your employees, um, an iPad could be used out in the field, right? Hey, here's an iPad. The only stipulations you got to put are, are the apps that we need and bring it with you to work. The rest of it's yours, man, right? Doing that, it is a gift to them. Uh, they really like, whoa, blown away by it, but also helps you in the field. AirPods are another one giving away those kind of things. They use them in the field if they're using them in the field. It really is nice. They don't have cords or wires, right? And it's something they may not have bought themselves, right? AirPods are like $175 headphones. Those are expensive when it comes to headphones. But for you to give that as your employee is not a big deal. And by the way, here's, here's the rant time. And I apologize, send your angry emails to jersey at windowcleaner.com. But if you don't have the money to bonus your employees, you your prices are way too low. A lot of times when people are like, I don't know how people shut down. Like, how can you not make money for the your your those are the type of people who say, and this may be you, and it's not a, a bad thing, but something for you to look at. But those are the type of people who say, Yeah, I can't charge more in my area. I can't. Like they just won't let it. You've never tried. You've never tried. Understand that when you are doing $75 a man hour, what you're charging, that equates to everything else. Your advertising, marketing, blah, 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 but also gifts, also bonuses, also maintenance, also all of that. And you can play your employees a better salary, keeping better employees. If you think that somebody's not paying a luxury service, no, not my area, I got a small town. 
Well, then you're probably on route. That's a little bit different, but it's still a luxury service, right? People are scared to charge more because they wouldn't pay more for the service because they're not their ideal customer. But I'm telling you, spend one week, increase your prices uh, significantly for one week and watch that you get maybe, you know, one less yes. It's not a big deal. But anyway, that opens the door for all this. So as we're saying that, if you're thinking in your head, there's no way I could bonus an employee, you got to uh, increase your income so that there's a possibility for that. That's my opinion. But yeah, gift bonuses, super awesome. I kind of have them, again, tethered to um, uh, window cleaning in general just because it makes more sense, but you can do them anyway. If you know one of your employees, say you only have one employee, but you know, oh man, he really likes guitars and you want to buy him a really nice guitar or something, awesome. Remember, if you're going to give a $1,000 bonus, that's like, wow, that's awesome. But if you give somebody a $1,000 guitar, they're like, holy cow, right? It impacts people a little bit different. So think about that. Another thing to think about in bonusing is, are you going to do a percentage or a flat rate? So a lot of times you can do it a couple ways. You can look at your 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 thing and say, okay, for this year we did so good, I got $5,000 that I'm going to bonus out. How am I going to impl- structure that between employees, you know? How am I going to do that, make that work, make that look? Maybe you do a percentage. So percentage-wise is, you know, you look at uh, spring and go, okay, well, these three months or these, you know, six months, we hit X amount of percentage and that's what I want to do. I've also had people who bonus their employees. Uh, We did this post. By the way, if you're not following me on TikTok, I know it's TikTok, but if you're on TikTok, search me. Um, and follow me. It'd be huge uh, awesomeness. But we do lives every day on uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and um, we do uh, a TikTok tip on TikTok. Anyway, during this last week, we were talking about uh, employees. One of our daily questions that I always ask uh, was, do you bonus your employee? And some people were like, I bonus them a percentage of their hourly. So X amount of hours, they're going to make a percentage on that or percentage of their uh, hourly, or something along those lines. There is no real wrong way, right? I never tethered it specifically to something because that allowed me to float both ways. If we had a big year, but yet we were really equipment heavy, maybe I wouldn't have as much bonus to put out there. You know, if you tether it to a, say you say, okay, for every hour you work, I'm giving you 50 cents extra. That's your bonus. In my opinion, it's not really a bonus, right? That's that's you're just paying them more, but they just don't get that all the time. They only get that at the end of the year. Again, could be totally cool. Could be something you want to do, but I don't do it that way. A loose bonus for that is going to be a flat rate, but that flat rate can change because it's not tethered to anything. So we had years before we landed giant contracts, and they really just worked so hard to get that. Everything done on this calendar was just crap. That bonus was going to be bigger than I have ever bonus before because they went through so much more stuff, right? I had so much more appreciation. Now, it doesn't mean that they um, that they are... <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, by the way, this stupid ring light is falling and uh, keeps getting in front of the camera. So anyway, sorry. Um... <laughs> Uh, I don't edit videos, so there you go. But yeah, it, it just depends on what kind of goes on that year. I don't like having it tethered either because then it's really up to you and where you are in business and everything to decide on what happens. So either way, it's right. Either way, it's right. But I'm totally cool with the pull it out of your butt price and uh, give them that as a bonus. A percentage or flat. Definitely something to think about. Another way that people do it, which would be a percentage, but uh, more tethered to structured, is what would be considered like a profit sharing type bonus. Now, I say this with a lot of different things, right? So talk to your accountant as to how it can be worded because there is some legalities with the actual term profit sharing. It, It... If you're saying it's profit sharing in one year, it's percentage 
to this or the percentage change or something. There may be some weird things, so check on that. But in your brain, <clears throat> you can do profit sharing. And basically what that is is say, okay, so in the first six months of business, we did $100,000, okay? Uh, out of that, right, with costs and everything, we did a, in six months, we did a $10,000 profit, right? We did a $20,000 profit, depending on how heavy you run your company. And, and remember, profits after everybody gets paid, expenses, everything. So say for even numbers, it's a $10,000 profit. Say with your employees. Now on those numbers, you're probably running a $200,000 company. You probably got two employees, right? Um, with that being said, you got two employees to split that for. for. So you could take the $10,000 profit and give them each $1,000 out of that. Or you could say, I'm going to percentage off a half of that. I want to split half of that extra profit with these guys, right? Because half of it's going to the company. You've already paid yourself. Maybe you are going to bonus yourself, but you have to keep money in the company. So anything you bonus out is obviously not going to go towards marketing or something. So you don't want to necessarily max out all of it. With that all being said, whatever that percentage is, you say, hey, guys, this year it's a $1,000 bonus. You buy somebody a $1,000 guitar, like I said, or you give them a check for $1,000, right? Or whatever. That's like, whoa, that's a chunk of money. It still leaves you with profit, obviously, but it shows them that the harder they're working for that, you're actually percentaging that. That's an easy way to kind of find out what your percentage is based on what you're doing. Now, go back to Corona, right? Where <clears throat> when it went real heavy, there was a few months where people were scrambling and there was a, a good beginning of the year in 2020 that um, was really rough for a lot of people. So in a normal year, you were supposed to make $100,000, which equates to $10,000 of profit. But instead, you only did like 50000 It was rough. 50000 right? $50,000 and all the expenses and things that you had to then pay employees to do that wasn't work, maybe you only made like a couple thousand dollars in profit. Now it's up to you to do if you want to do a percentage of it or give them all the profit or however you want to do. But a big thing is, is like, hey, if I paid extra money to keep you guys on the books, even when there was no work, Unfortunately, we just don't have the profit margin to share a lot of profit. So we're only going to do, you know, a $200, uh, you know, uh, bonus this time. But uh, we're going to rack it up and we're going to get that bonus back up the later end of this year. And then people had record years. So now all of a sudden their bonus is going to be even bigger, right? But even in your brain tethering that, it makes you more understand where the money is coming from and how the money is coming, Right a lot of times there is a little bit lost where you want to give your employees everything, but making it actual mathematically make sense and have some kind of understanding is way more important than just pulling a number out of your butt. Because if you only did a thousand dollars in profit in the first half of 2020, when it comes to profit, but you didn't look those numbers up and you bonus them a bunch, well, you could bonus more than you actually profited. You just lost money in that first six months. And I know a lot of us did, but we really don't want to do that. So that's another really good way to kind of think of that as a profit sharing type bonus. And don't have to tell them how it's being structured. It's just how your brain wraps around justifying and understanding how much. Because people will send me messages, especially after even this. Hey, man, how much should I employ uh, bonus my employees? That's why. That's how you think. Find your, your profit and bonus from that. Another really good thing that it does that people... A lot of the OGs, the people who've been in the game for a while and have employees for a while, there's one really, really important thing that a lot of us forget. And it's that there is not a lot of loyalty in employee employee relations. Showing your employees that you really loyal are loyal to them and you are um, appreciative goes so much farther. People are willing to do a little bit more crap when they have to, when they realize they're being, you know, either rewarded or that they're appreciated. Like, oh man, this sucks, but he's really going to be, you know, happy. If you get to just that structure where, you know, it's your job, you got to do your job. And then like, man, you don't even, you don't even care what I do. 
right? People don't then want to put in a little bit more for you. So showing somebody that you're loyal is really, really important. And it also keeps them happy. If you can keep them happy and keep them understanding where you're coming from, then it's going to help out the long run either way for you. So really important to build that loyalty. Same thing we talked about in other episodes you can go back and watch. But um, the loyalty to them is buying them lunches sometimes and, and, and buying them, you know, uh, ping pong tables or filling the fridge with uh, ice cold Gatorade or, or all those little things that show them that you have them as your best interest. Another big thing on that, just to get sidetracked, is uh, showing them that you choose them over the customer. Sometimes, and I know the customer's always right, but sometimes customers just try to throw employees under the bus and it doesn't mean anything. And I've had people where, like I had one person say that um, our employee stole a phone that was charging. They, the, the, the cord was still there and they, they stole the phone. I know the guy. I've known him for years. His phone was always brand new. He doesn't need another phone. He doesn't need the money. He's not that type of guy. I said, dude, did, did you take, you know, that phone? Did you see it? Did you anything? He's like, no, man, I don't even know what they're talking about. Why would I be over by the chair? It's on an inside wall. I never even go over by the inside walls, you know? And I basically went to the customers like, it's just not a thing. Like we did not, it can't, it can't happen. It's, it's just not, I know my employees, I stand behind them. And that went really, really far. Now, uh, a couple of days later, they actually called me and said that when they, it was charging in the arm of the chair, uh, it got unplugged and fell uh, in between the cushions and they found it and it was like, you know, dead by then. But um, but anyway, something to kind of think about. Uh, building loyalty. But always show them they're appreciated. Appreciation in employees in general. Here's a hard truth. A hard truth for us as business owners is that we need employees. Now, if you're a sole, uh, you know, one-man show, that's completely different. We're not talking about that. But as soon as you jump into having employees, you will always have employees or you will have to do less work. Because if you have a crew, it's you and a crew of two, that's three people. You are not yourself going to do all the work that all three of you did. Just not, not going to, right? So once you jump into that, space you're always in that space if you talk to anybody who has had employees and then got rid of employees they go back to doing a lot less work because of that and that's cool too there's no wrong way right but you are appreciated uh, appreciative of employees employees are needed by you and good employees are really hard to find so as much as we feel like without me you wouldn't have any money well, yeah, but he'd find another job a lot quicker than you'd find another good employee and have that employee trained. So we want employees, we need employees, and when you have good employees, when you have a good employee or a good batch or a really good crew, when I left, the crew that I had was so solid in every position. I think at that time we had like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven employees, something like that at that time, because I left uh, middle of summer, so uh, we weren't in the busiest season, but I think we were running. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Everybody that I had was like literally awesome. The crews worked perfectly together. Like it was so fluid and perfect that I wanted to keep that. I wanted to make sure that everybody there stayed there. So give them everything you can. It makes your life easier. Give them some bonuses. Let them show that you're appreciative of what they do, and I'm telling you it'll come back. So either way, that's this episode. If you haven't yet saved my number, pull your phone out right now. I'm going to give you my cell phone number, and you can write it down. Save my number. Are you ready? All right, all right. My number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. Text me. If you want to call, that's super cool, but I'm on the phone all day too, so if I don't answer, just text me. Um, Like I said, I am actually going on vacation this next week from when this uh, airs, Um, but other than that, I'm always there uh, ready to uh, help, and I'd love to put orders in. People go in there, and they're just like, you know, um, 
hey, everything's in my cart. Go ahead and put it through. Those are people who just shop, put everything in their cart, save their cart, uh, make sure you're signed in, and then just let me put it in. And it's absolutely amazing. I, I have so many amazing customers. I mean, so many of you let me put every single order in for you, every single order. I mean, it's it's amazing. It literally is amazing. I get uh, just... It's you guys just are fantastic. So if you let me put your orders in, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I promise. Um, and another thing, uh, I know a lot of you have done already, but a lot of you have not, is subscribed to American Window Cleaner Magazine. Now, if you haven't seen, I mean, articles, um, just pictures. There's posters in there. There's a sticker sheet, of course. There is giveaways and new products and reviews and Steve-O's a writer and Austin Grubbs is a writer. And there are just some really, really good uh, writers too. Gabe, uh, one of my favorite writers that we have. Uh, Jim Dubois, if you know who he is, he's a writer. These journalists do so much awesome stuff and it's all in the magazine. AWCMAG.com forward slash sub you can get a sticker subscription or you can get in and get a magazine subscription but uh, both are absolutely awesome get the magazine subscription just subscribe um, it's another way to support the industry it's another way to support me obviously uh, it helps us do better and it helps me be better and it's this high five of awesomeness so thank you very much and i won't talk to you again before the holidays so um actually i will one more i have to preload these so either way have a great holiday if i don't talk to you thank you so much for watching listening thank you for putting your orders in for me thank you for the subscription thank you just for everything i'm just so excited for everybody and uh, happy that you guys do what you do so thank you very much until next week go out there and bonus your employees but more importantly be epic